Report, the CCP's central bank secretly hoards over 5,300 tons of gold. Hong Kong banks rush for foreign currency deposits, fixed deposit rates surge. CCP tightens spending amid economic struggle, expert calls it formalism. Tencent CEO's aging photo goes viral, company rushes to debunk rumors. Mass closures in China's obstetrics departments, over 20,000 kindergartens shut in two years. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Report, the CCP's central bank secretly hoards over 5,300 tons of gold. Jan Nguyenhuij, a foreign expert who closely follows China's gold market, recently discovered in a report that Beijing's secret gold hoarding has exceeded 5,300 tons, which is 2.4 times the officially reported figure. Beijing has been massively buying gold for 15 consecutive months. By subtracting the officially reported purchases from the figures reported by the World Gold Council, Nguyenhuij calculated that the People's Bank of China, PBOC, the central bank of the Chinese Communist Party, actually holds 5,358 tons of gold reserves, far higher than the disclosed 2,250 tons. In an article published on the Gainesville Coins website on March 21, Nguyenhuij said that China may be the driving force behind the recent rise in global gold prices, as Beijing has begun hoarding gold to protect its economy from the impact of a depreciating U.S. dollar. According to his estimates, in 2023, the PBOC bought a record 735 tons of gold in total, 23% higher than the previous record of 597 tons set in 2022. Nguyenhuij stated that after consulting with industry insiders, he learned that the majority of China's unreported gold purchases were subscribed by the PBOC. The box gold holdings are a closely guarded secret, with the central bank being the largest gold buyer among its peers in 2023. The true amount remains unknown. Nguyenhuij has detailed his estimation process, noting that China's gold reserves cannot be tracked through mining or net imports, as this gold is sold to the private sector via the Shanghai Gold Exchange. According to Nguyenhuij, the PBOC purchases gold abroad with dollars and transports it to Beijing leaving no customs trace. Insider information from banks and refineries dealing with the PBOC is the only way to gauge its purchases. In 2015, an industry insider claimed the PBOC held around 3,300 tons of gold. Anonymous sources suggest unreported purchases can indicate the box quarterly increase, with most being PBOC recognized. The World Gold Council's quarterly estimates of central bank purchases usually exceed reported amounts, reflecting unreported buying. Nguyenhuij attributes 80% of this to the box secret purchases based on anecdotal evidence. Beijing's massive gold buying in the past two years has transformed the global market, with the CCP gaining price control from the West and driving up prices. This demand, along with Chinese investors shifting from real estate and stocks, has fueled the gold price surge. Another reason might be Beijing's concern over the potential devaluation of the dollar affecting the Chinese economy, attempting to gradually de-dollarize. However, regardless of the aforementioned reasons, both could lead to a market disaster. Nguyenhuij predicts that as the price of gold rises, Western investors will also invest in gold due to the same concerns bringing a perfect storm to precious metals. Hong Kong banks rush for foreign currency deposits, fixed deposit rates surge. In recent times, Hong Kong's prominent banks have turned aggressively towards securing foreign currency deposits by offering exceptionally high annual interest rates, peaking at 13.9% for one-week fixed deposits in foreign currencies. This strategy marks a significant pivot from previous practices that mandated such lucrative interest offerings to be backed by fresh capital injections. This change underscores the bank's pressing demand for foreign currency liquidity. The Epoch Times investigation into HSBC branches revealed a widespread increase in short-term foreign currency fixed deposit rates, with the one-week rates for the pound sterling reaching 12.5% per annum and 12% for both the Australian and Canadian dollars. The rate for the US dollar stood at 8%. However, for three-month US dollar fixed deposits, the rate was lower, at 3.9%. HSBC 
which earlier stipulated that high interest deposits be supported by new capital, relaxed its requirements, allowing existing account holders to convert Hong Kong dollars into foreign currencies for these deposits, starting from a threshold as low as 2,000 US dollars. These enhanced interest rates were promoted on the bank's website as available until the end of March. Hang Seng Bank, part of the HSBC Group, unveiled a plan to hike interest rates for foreign currency deposits for the first quarter of 2024. For transactions exceeding 10,000 Hong Kong dollars, approximately 1,300 US dollars, through Hang Seng, the one-week annual interest rates for the Canadian dollar, yuan, pound, and Australian dollar were set at 13.9%, with the US dollar fixed deposit rate at 10.9% annually. Standard Chartered Bank and ICBC Asia similarly introduced high-interest options for short-term foreign currency deposits, catering especially to cross-border funds, with competitive rates aimed at attracting substantial deposits. This surge in high-interest foreign currency deposit offerings indicates a tightness in the availability of short-term foreign currency funding among Hong Kong banks. Data from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, HKMA, as of January indicated a decline in deposits in both Hong Kong and US dollars, highlighting a potential shift or withdrawal of foreign capital, which warrants close monitoring due to its implications on the availability of foreign currencies, particularly the US dollar, in the local banking system. The scenario is complicated by various factors, including a decrease in the interbank offered rates leading to a preference for foreign currency deposits over local currency ones and a potential trend of capital withdrawal from Hong Kong. The HKMA data revealing a dip in foreign currency deposits in January further adds to the concern, suggesting a decrease in the influx of foreign capital, which has historically been a significant contributor to Hong Kong's banking system liquidity. The fluctuation in deposit levels, alongside banks' responses in offering high interest rates for short-term deposits, indicates an underlying economic tension. This tension is further exacerbated by the potential for increased non-performing loans, especially in the context of property debt, and the measures banks are taking to ensure liquidity and capital adequacy, including the attraction of short-term high-interest deposits. These developments signal a cautious economic outlook for Hong Kong's banking sector, underlining the need for close observation and analysis of the implications of these high interest rate offerings and the overall health of the banking system in the face of shifting capital flows and economic policies. CCP tightens spending amid economic struggle, expert calls it formalism. With the Chinese economy weakening and local governments burdened with high debt, various regions have introduced specific measures to tighten belts and save money, including continuing to use reparable office desks, chairs, computers, and official vehicles. Experts believe that local governments are engaging in formalism, addressing symptoms rather than the root causes. As the economic downturn affects government revenue, this year's government reports have called for austerity across all government levels. Beijing led with a set of 19 austerity measures in February, Hunan followed in March with 10 specific actions, and Inner Mongolia and other regions like Heilongjiang and Qinghai have also adopted similar measures to enforce spending cuts within party and governmental bodies. Lai Jianping, a former Beijing lawyer and chair of the Federation for a Democratic China-Canada, said, the CCP at all levels of government is forced by circumstances to live through hard and tight days they have no choice but to do so. In recent years, the CCP's counterproductive policies have severely affected China's economic development. Its investments, consumption, and exports in all sectors have shrunk significantly, leading to an extreme contraction in government tax revenue and base, making it difficult to balance fiscal revenues and expenditures. The Central Economic Work Conference in December 2023 emphasized the need for austerity, which was echoed by the finance minister in January, urging the prioritization of major projects over lavish spending. According to Lai, the era of government excess is over, necessitating severe cutbacks and administrative expenses as the only way forward. This shift follows former Premier Li Keqiang's 2019 call for government frugality, leading to widespread pay cuts among civil servants and staff reductions in central agencies by March 2023. The primary targets for spending cuts are operational expenses and salaries. 
despite anticipated reductions in social services like education and health care, military and security budgets are expected to grow, deemed essential for regime stability. In 2024, security spending is set to increase by 1.44%, with military expenditure rising by 7.2%. Historian Li Yuanhua highlights that the financial strain is evident, especially in local governments responsible for various stability maintenance efforts, which necessitate significant funding. Local governments, previously relying on land sales and taxes, are now strapped for cash due to the real estate downturn and the economic slump affecting businesses. This financial crunch forces them to cut back, despite the growing obligations of debt repayment and fixed expenses like civil servant salaries. Reports from last August indicated that several local governments are effectively insolvent, with debt ratios exceeding sustainable levels, underscoring the severity of the fiscal crisis. Li Yuanhua criticizes the austerity measures as ineffective and superficial, arguing that the bureaucratic system's reliance on financial incentives renders these strategies incapable of addressing the root problems. Furthermore, he points out the contradiction in CCP policies, such as the recent push for equipment upgrades and consumer good replacements, which seems at odds with the call for austerity, illustrating the complex challenge of promoting economic activity while enforcing spending cuts. Tencent CEO's aging photo goes viral, company rushes to debunk rumors. A photo that allegedly shows Tencent's chairman and CEO, Ma Huateng, looking significantly aged has been spreading like wildfire online, sparking a flurry of speculation. According to a report by IT Home on the 25th, the blogger's post questioned Ma's appearance following the release of Tencent's 2023 financial report, accompanying their concerns with a photo that showed Ma with almost entirely white and gray hair. This post quickly climbed the ranks of Weibo's hot search list, eliciting comments from netizens like he really seems to have aged, definitely looks older, and reminds us of the youth of an era. However, Tencent's PR director, Zhang Jun, clarified on Weibo that the aging photo of Ma Huateng was too poorly photoshopped and shared an authentic photo of Ma. He revealed that the genuine photo was taken at a National Federation of Industry and Commerce Advisory Committee meeting on March 22. This clarification itself became a hot topic, with netizens jokingly commenting, Boss Ma quickly had a facelift and dyed his hair to debunk the rumor, the recent photo also looks photoshopped. The blogger has since deleted the original post. Tencent released its fourth quarter and full-year financial report for 2023 on March 20. The report showed the full-year revenue was 609.15 billion yuan, a 10% increase from the previous year, with an adjusted net profit of 157.68 billion yuan, a 36% increase. Tencent Holdings stated that the company achieved breakthroughs in multiple products and services in 2023. User engagement on video accounts doubled, advertising AI models significantly improved the effectiveness of targeted ads, and international market games reached a new peak, accounting for 30% of game revenue. Tencent Holdings Limited, known simply as Tencent, is mainland China's largest internet company, founded in November 1998 by Ma Huateng and four others. It's headquartered in the Tencent Binhai Mansion in Shenzhen's Nanshan District. Tencent operates in various sectors including social media, finance, investment, news, tools, and platforms, offering a wide range of global internet-related services and products, entertainment, AI, and technology. Tencent has been embroiled in controversies over the years, particularly with its platform WeChat, which has faced issues of data leaks and information monitoring and censorship. Earlier reports by foreign media highlighted that almost everyone in mainland China with a mobile phone downloads WeChat for calls, messaging, chatting, and even shopping online. In a 2018 speech, Li Shufu, chairman of the automotive giant Geely Holding Group, openly discussed China's privacy and information security issues, suggesting, I always think that Ma Huateng must be watching our WeChats every day, because he can. Mass closures in China's obstetrics departments, over 20,000 kindergartens shut in two years. In recent years, the number of kindergartens in China has continued to decrease. 
According to the latest data from the Ministry of Education of the Communist Party of China, there were 274,400 kindergartens in 2023, 289,200 in 2022, and 294,800 in 2021. This means that, over two years, the number of kindergartens in China has decreased by 20,400, with 14,800 of those closures occurring in 2023 alone. Furthermore, the National Bureau of Statistics of China's statistical communique on the 2023 National Economic and Social Development shows that in 2023, there were 40.93 million children enrolled in kindergartens, down by 5.345 million from 46.275 million in 2022, marking the third consecutive year of decline. It is widely believed that the precipitous decline in China's population has led to a significant decrease in the number of children attending kindergartens. China's population has seen negative growth for two consecutive years, with the number of births dropping to 10.62 million in 2021, 9.56 million in 2022, and just 9.02 million in 2023. Hunan province has been particularly affected by the decline in birth rates, leading the way nationally. In December 2023, the Education Department of Hunan province issued a document calling for the orderly organization of the merging, transformation, and withdrawal of kindergartens, becoming the first provincial government in China to officially order the closure of kindergartens, sparking widespread public debate. Data from the Ministry of Education of China shows that in 2021, the number of children attending kindergartens nationwide decreased by 0.27% compared to the previous year, while Hunan saw a decrease of 0.86%, more than three times the national average. In 2022, the number of children in kindergartens nationwide plummeted by 3.7% compared to the previous year, with Hunan experiencing a 5.8% decrease. Alongside the large number of kindergarten closures, China's obstetrics and gynecology departments are also facing a wave of mass closures, including high-level institutions like the Fifth People's Hospital of Ganzhou City and others in Zhujiang, Guangzhou, Ningbo, Guangdong, Fujian, and Shandong, affecting a range of traditional and modern medical facilities. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.